Now follow me. This video is real time, but I'm going to have the full weigh-in for you within the next hour, maybe two hours. So we're going to listen to it first, and then we're going to talk about it. Paul is getting on the scale. This is real time. I don't know what he weighs yet. He's been in a very long training camp. Um, I would say he's been in training camp probably 12 out of the last 14 weeks. And he looks in phenomenal shape. In fact, he looks in the best shape I've ever seen him in his career. Was a 146.8. You know what I don't like? Let's hear what Paul has to say first. I feel great. I see, I see my crowd out here and it motivates me. And, uh, it pushes me to want to work harder and want to win for them. You have often said that it's about your style, not your opponent at all. How so and how much does that control the tempo of this fight? Well, I just feel like if I'm at my best, then people got to adapt to me and people got to, you know, uh, get used to me and try to get, get my rhythm down. I shouldn't have to worry about the other guy. I mean, I'm fighting a good fighter, but I'm... Uh, if I focus on the other fighter, then it's going to get in my head. Fuck was Paulie Heaton, his tongue is blue. And when I'm the best possible Paulie Malinaji, I'm, I'm very difficult to beat. That's the one, Paulie. Paulie, 146.48. You know what I don't like? As the undefeated Philly fighter Wait until they put their clothes back on before you interview them, Joe Tessitore, or ESPN, or whoever's calling this. So they get up the scale, they be in their draws, and it's just... One forty six point six for Danny. That's the highest he ever weighed in, in his career. How much more comfortable does it feel? I feel great, man. I feel strong. I never had I never felt so strong during training kit and I'm just ready to go tomorrow. This is an opportunity tomorrow night on ESPN in prime time against a guy that's been around and a named fighter. How important is it for you to stamp yourself to the mainstream fans and uh, let them see what you're all about? It's very important for me to go out there and look spectacular and just and just be Danny Garcia and just be the young star that he is. The Philly fighter taking on the hometown hero. Danny, best of luck. Undefeated. Now, let's talk about it. Um, let's talk about the real shit. There are a lot of fans that want to see Danny Garcia lose. Why? It's because they felt Danny Garcia has been given a lot of gift decisions. Or I'm not going to say a lot. Most notably, uh, Mauricio Herrera. I'm not no fraud. I'm going to tell you, even though I'm from Philly, I had Mauricio Herrera winning that fight. And Mauricio Herrera should have been undisputed champion in the world. That was Danny Garcia's last fight at 140 pounds. He did not look good. He's been telling us for quite some time, even during that time, even though he was in Puerto Rico, he did admit to eating a lot and, you know, and, and, and all of that. But he's not comfortable at 140 pounds. A lot of fans don't know that Danny Garcia only spent just one third or maybe less of his career, if I'm correct, nine fights at 140 pounds. He's 30 in all with 17 KOs. So I guess what I'm saying to you is this. Danny Garcia is a lot better than people actually give him credit for. Yeah, he's not fleet of foot. Yeah, he's a bit flat footed. But even if you look at the Lamont Peterson fight, in my opinion, he won that fight. But at the same time, Lamont Peterson, even if he did win, it was a close fight. And, and, and a lot of people thought that Danny Garcia wouldn't be, 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 have been able to beat him. And what about the Lucas Matisse situation? Now, I understand there's no excuse for Rod Salker, but I'm guessing I'm saying this. People didn't think he was going to beat Zab Judah. People didn't think he was going to beat Eric Morales the first time. I remember the first time he beat Eric Morales. Eric Morales was actually good. Who was it he had fought? Pablo Cesar Cano um, and Marcos Maidana. And when he fought Marcos Maidana, that was an untelevised basically fight of the year at that point in time. So when you look at Danny Garcia's record and when you look at what he's done, what he's done, his career has kind of been built off of him doing what people have said he, has, he would not be able to do. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a Paulie Malignaggi fan, and Paulie Malignaggi is a very smart and educated fighter. So, Paulie does have a chance as far as Paulie has a chance of beating Danny Garcia on the cards. But if Danny Garcia comes out and he's healthy now at 147 pounds, you know, he's at the 147 pound limit. He said that he's not in camp concerning himself with losing weight and making weight, but he's more in camp focused on, focused on actual, you know, training and learning new techniques. For example... He's been chasing chickens. Is he, chicken, is, he, is he chasing chickens for publicity? Or is it a genuine attempt to try to work on the foot movement? Now, of course, there's so many different, more non-primitive ways to work on your foot movement. But at the same time, it does show me a little bit of he's trying to fix some of his flaws. Now, when it comes to 
Paulie Malignaggi, Paulie Malignaggi is going to have to be on his bike. Paulie Malignaggi, if I'm correct, only has six KOs, and he's never been known a guy as a guy to go out there and knock you out, but Paulie Malignaggi can out-throw you, and Paulie Malignaggi um, can went on a card to get a guy like Danny Garcia, you know, a flat-footed fighter. So if you look at the fight, realistically, it's kind of a 50-50 fight. Now, of course, if you don't know me, if you haven't followed me, I'm a big Paulie Malignaggi fan, but I'm from Philly. And that's why I'm just saying it is truly, if you really think about it and break everything down as far as both fighters' strengths or weaknesses, it's somewhat of a 50-50 fight. In my opinion, Danny Garcia is not the same fight. Danny Garcia is not Sean Porter. So I don't see Danny Garcia, even though he may try, I don't see Danny Garcia coming out there to try to, well, he's going to come out there and try to knock Paulie Malignaggi out, but he doesn't have that same pressure and, you know, all that bobbing and weaving um, in that movement that Sean Porter had to be able to get Paulie out of there early. So it's going to be a very interesting fight, but I guess the question we're asking next is, what's going to be next for Paulie if he loses? What's going to be next for Danny if he wins it? If Paulie loses, I had a, 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 a time to sit down and, uh, well, not sit down, but I had a time to talk to him. And basically he was saying, you know, He's not going to go in there just to, you know, lay down against Danny Garcia. But also, if he loses, he's not saying that he's going to retire. You know, so there are some fights out there, in my opinion, that Paulie can win. But when it comes to certain fighters, it's going to be it's, it's good to see how he's going to do against a guy like Danny Garcia. And also, if you don't know, back in April, he was supposed to fight a guy by the name of um, Danny O'Connor. So basically, if you look at Paulie's situation, he's been in like a double training camp. He said he only took... Uh, two weeks off in between time I mean in between time and basically you know looking at him get on a scale he looks like in the best shape I've seen him in in his career in my personal opinion in my personal opinion so of course you have to address the controversy you know how has uh, Mimo Haradia been helping Paul in camp and you know it's crazy because I've got to talk about it and it's like oh Paulie why would you put yourself in that situation I'm not saying who you should hire or who you, who you should not but with the verbal onslaught, he's been just spewing out on Pacquiao, you know, for just months and months and months now. It's like, well, you have a known, you have a known, well-known pusher in your camp. You know, even though whatever, he may not be doing that anymore, whatever the case may be, it's just like, it's kind of, you know, like a, a hypocritical situation. So it's like, if you're accusing Manny Pacquiao of being on something, Manny Pacquiao it was with Alex Ariza when everybody was saying he was on something. Alex Ariza is with Floyd Mayweather, and Mimar Everdia has been known to frequent the camp of Mayweather. So it's a, it's, 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 it's a tricky situation. And you know, the only thing I want Paulie to do is, it's like, well, then stop fucking talking about Pacquiao. You know, just my own personal opinion. But I'm going to be at the fight um, as a non-biased media reporter. And I'm just going to be there basically reporting the fight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing something different as far as I'm going to be doing my post-fight video. Like, you know, I do my post-fight results videos. I'm going to do it after the fight. You know, well, not, well, basically after the event, after they start breaking down and everything because you can't record in the arena, I'm going to do a post-fight video live from the Barclay Center. Please subscribe. I am T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. As I said, I'm going to have the full way in on the channel. Um... Sooner than later, we've been providing full coverage. Shout out to um, Xavier, who's out there right now at the Barclays Center. I am T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live.